Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before 4 Diesel. This one is going to have everything I've got for you on compression testing a diesel engine, a little bit different to a petrol, and on the 1KDs and other similar engines with Denso injectors, some things you can use to make it easier, and, so, and some information so you can get some really reliable results because there is a number of factors that do fudge the results okay you may not have thought about perhaps i've spent too much time thinking about it but um, there was a vehicle just recently um, we're working on trying to help out craig at the moment to um, get his problem sorted and the mechanic in tassie probably should have had a setup like one of these and it would have made things really simple not that it's needed because you could see the engine idling um, that it's got a cracked piston or something similar we say that because um, when a 1KD fails, it's usually a cracked piston. If it hasn't got that block oil pickup from, you know, these seats leaking on the injectors, and these aren't injectors, compression tests. But look, just wanted to say, quite time that I've been meaning to give you all this information, and uh, there was someone that could have done with it a bit sooner, unfortunately. So let's be really clear. Any engine, if you've got problems with it, and you're putting a set of injectors in it, you will want to definitely do a compression check first. Now, what else can I tell you? Now, you gotta be careful because the compression test can be wrong, okay? Why is it wrong? Well, a couple of reasons is, um, you can get high readings if you've let oil run down into the cylinders, okay? And you can get low readings if you've messed around with um, the EGR taking the elbow or anything like that off as part of the job or if you've pulled the injectors out and they've got carbon and stuff on them some of that may fall down the hole and this is an injector we'll get to that in a minute but these are the sorts of things that can happen even if it's clean there can be a tiny little bit of carbon on the injector nozzle okay that falls into the cylinder then when you turn the key next that bit of carbon blows inlet compression power exhaust psh, out in and out the valves or whatever and you get a little bit of soot under that exhaust valve and it does lower the compression. So the problem you've got with any compression test on any of these diesel engines with all that dirty soot that's in there, um, you may get the wrong reading. So you can have a reading that makes the engine look really good. Or you, okay, so we've had engines where the, we've used this system and the readings look good and we've had a system, uh, sorry, and we, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, <laughs> we've had engines that are good Let me get this right. We've had engines that are good that tell us they're bad because they've got the soot under the valves Lucky we knew better a bit of common sense and experience luckily, right? And that's why we're here to give you this information because I know that most of you haven't worked on hundreds or thousands of 1KDs And it's not just 1KDs this relates to any diesel or you know the V8s whatever you want there You know same sort of system with injectors and clamp down in the seats and compression tests and all that sort of thing so Keep that in mind, okay? If you've got an engine that you reckon's okay, but you're checking and it says it's down a bit, you kind of want a second opinion, a third opinion. And if you've got one that you know is stuffed and it says it's okay, that's the other thing that can happen as well, right? So first thing you want to do, if you're going to do injectors on a 1KD, for example, we'll talk about that. In my opinion, you want to park the vehicle and switch it off the day before you're going to work on it, okay? Then most of the oil's drained down from around the injectors while it's hot, so a hot, you switch it off hot, not cold, right? You drive it in, bang. So this is what I do, I'll just quickly say, you know, we'll bring it in, we'll give it a pressure wash, clean it up if we need to, because it needs to be a clean environment. I'm gonna blow it dry, I'm gonna plug in the diagnostic, have a quick look, see what's going on with it, and we're gonna take it for a road test to see how it's behaving and what, whether it's normal or not, if there's any other symptoms or issues. That's also gonna heat it all up and help finish off drying that engine. And the oil is going to be nice and hot and thin. We're going to bring it in, park it in our injector bay, dedicated injector bay, and switch it off and that's it. Because then all that thin oil, it drains down overnight, and then first thing the next morning we're into it. Then we don't get that oil that's pulled around the injectors running down as soon as we pull in. See, there's an O-ring here to stop it going down. So number four is the biggest culprit. So that's the one you've got to be careful of. You might want to have a rag ready, pull number four out, and then quickly just wrap the ring around your finger and in the hole to get that little bit of oil that's sitting around the top of the hole that might want to run in there and you can just wipe around the top of the hole just make sure you don't push it so that it goes down the hole because you'll cause a you'll cause your own problem then right so you just need to carefully do that and once you get enough of it away from around number four 
it won't come over. There's like a ledge there. It's a bit like a swimming pool with a coping tile, okay? The oil's not going to come over the coping tile or the injector, the head, the, you know what I mean, the perimeter around the injector once you've got an amount of it out of the way, right? So then it's nice and clean. You need to give those ports a bit of a pre-clean. Unfortunately, you can't crank it over too much because the oil pumps and then the oil starts going in and causes problems. This is why we use four of these, okay? So we've got four. What this is, this is what's called a dummy injector. I had this designed and manufactured years ago now. And they are, funnily enough, look, there's the Kaon sticker there. They're available from kaon.com.au. Um, they're in Queensland, made in Australia. Um, you can also buy them off eBay. So if you search on eBay, you'll find them for about, I think they're about 9, 89 bucks each or something like that. Um, it doesn't come with a glow plug adapter in it. You just take your, the normal glow plug adapter, what you'd use, say, you know, in the glow plug hole and you, you know, Teflon tape or whatever, and thread that into there. Obviously, we've got some for other engines that we're doing through the glow plugs or other engines. You know, we've got whole kits there anyway. I'm just, this is kind of like 1KD Toyota specific type stuff. So you put those in. We reuse these seats, obviously. We, we start off with a new set. We reuse them probably 10, 20, 30 times before we bin those because at the end of the day, they're not staying in there to run the engine forever. They're just, or well, for a long time, they're just for a compression test, so they're fine. So we reuse them, reuse them, reuse them. You can probably reuse them forever. Ours, they end up like pancakes, so I throw them away and grab another set out. These are about six bucks each, so you don't want to replace them each time. It's going to cost you an extra 24 bucks for a compression test. So. You want to have four of these ideally. If you're going to do a few 1KDs or other engines where you've got a similar Denso system, you want to have enough to bolt all those down, and that's what I do. They all go in place. We clamp them down, right? Just like an injector. It is just like an injector, and literally, you know, this comes along and, oh, look, you know, it's always awkward when I'm, you know, there it is, right? So it's plugged on just like that, right? So they just go on like that. And you might ask me why I've got four. Well, it's the old quality control thing, you know, the, the quality systems that came into place many decades ago. I think that was about 30 years ago, wasn't it, right? You know, we might not have the five ticks here. We're not spending the money to prove anything, but our own kind of quality assurance making things are done right is if I use one compression tester, right, and it tells me, let's just say a 1KD, good compression is about 400 PSI, right? Sometimes you're going to have a little bit over, a bit under, either side of about 400. Let's just say that I've just told you that. Well, you've checked the book, and the book says minimum 290, and it says maximum 70 PSI difference and all these sorts of things. It doesn't matter what the book says, because I can tell you that um, you can have results that are better than the book says, and the engine's stuffed. That's what I was saying before about there's a lot of variables, and that's why I put this information out there. It's like reality. The book can give you a guide. The talk specifications are usually correct. I have, can't think of one that I don't... Oh, the only one I disagree with is the four Newton meters on top of the glow plug on a 1KZ. That doesn't work. It cracks the um, it cracks the porcelain, okay? With a particular brand, but I'm not going to bag the brand. All I'm going to tell you is we're going totally off topic. Just nip those up with your hand and put no pressure whatsoever and put those plastic lock nut insulators over and the nut won't go anywhere, okay? Be careful of that. That's the only torque spec that I know of Toyota that doesn't always work. But I've got to say, it's not using genuine parts, is it? Using another brand. So, therefore, use Toyota and the 4 newton meters might work. Anyway, back on topic. The reason we've got 4 is you've worked out it already, right? So, you know, if we put them all on and they all say 400, happy days. If one says 380 and the rest say 400, hmm, what's going on there? I might want to know about it, you know what I mean? So, what we'll do, we'll just obviously let the pressure out you know and then disconnect all of them and swap them around it doesn't it only takes a second to go you know bang disconnect that and swap they'll still sit in the same place we just swap the hoses around and we go crank it again we're going to crank it around about it's usually probably a bit under 10 seconds you know probably seven or eight seconds sort of like it's gone over a few times you see the needles come up when they hit about 400 and they're sort of bouncing there and nothing's happening that's about it okay so you get them up to about there and sometimes you've got to get to them quickly or if you've got a help is good because again that those bits of soot that's in the engine right can blow up that up here and there's like a little one-way valve in these nozzles here right um is there have i got this right yeah see in there like a tie valve really ideally you should probably get like your tie and pull those out and give them a clean up if you want a precise you need to clean that. And you know what? You probably need to crank it. And if you get a reading that's not right, 
sometimes what you'll need to do is pop these out, unscrew it. I know it's a pain and clean the valve out. That's what I found myself doing. When everything's about okay, that's fine. But by swapping them around, and then if the reading goes with the compression tester, see this one? It says low on it, right? That's about, from memory, 10 PSI lower than the others, right? So it's not a big problem, but that's what I'm talking about. You know, quality control between all the gauges. Um, that one's a little bit lower. So I take note of the engine. If it's 10 lower, happy days, right? If it's 30 lower, I mean, oh, hang on a minute. We'll swap it around with one of the other ones and we'll see what happens. Okay, so you get the picture what's going on here. They're the seats you use. They're the tools you use. You screw your glow plug adapter into it. Um, doesn't matter what compression tester you've got because your adapter, this thread here is, I'm going by memory here years ago, I think it's 10 by 1.25 if I remember correctly. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, that looks right. Um, so your compression test kit will adapt and, and screw into there. So if you need one of those, you can check them out on eBay, 89 bucks each. Or if you want to get a whole set of four, I'll suggest email Kaon. Check their website. They've probably got an inquiry email. I don't know. Info at Kaon. I don't know. You know how it is. Website www.kaon.com.au. And just say, hey, I saw Anthony's video on YouTube and he's recommended me. We've got a workshop. If you can give me a trade price on four of those delivered to give me your postcode and they'll work out a price for you, I'm sure, and help you out. Bada bing. Right, so what else can I tell you? Um, if you've got in a, a car that comes in and it's got problems, okay, you need to check it out thoroughly, okay? So we've started off, this is about compression testing and the compression, we've told you what the normal PSIs are. The lowest I've ever seen on a 1KD is around about 350 and it was running fine, okay? Now, I've seen 370 on another engine, the engine was stuffed, okay? So this is what I'm telling you. If you see 350, look, book says minimum 290. I'd, su I'd suggest 290 is gonna be Look, we've, worked, we've done a lot of compression tests on 1KDs, and you know what? I haven't seen anything like 290, 323, 30, anything like it. I've seen, don't get me wrong, I've seen zero, and I've seen 100 and 150 and 200. That's when the soot gets under the uh, under the valve. You know, it's not here. We haven't got a valve here. The valve's over there in an engine, right? So when you get that bit of valve, but what happens is, this is where you've got to have a good battery. So please, guys... Make sure you remember the average life of a battery is four years. Don't take your vehicle in to get injectors done with a cactus battery. Make sure you've got a decent battery and it's well charged. Something to think about if you're suspect on a battery while you're doing an injector job, you might want to put it on charge because you're going to need a good... Look, it usually takes six seconds if you've primed up the fuel system to get the engine started after replacing the injectors, about that. Sometimes you need 10, 15, 20 seconds or a couple of goes at it. Um, so you need a good battery for that and especially so if you've done a bit of compression testing while doing the job um, it's a good test for a battery if it doesn't make it through the compression test it needs a new battery okay because I've done plenty of them and most batteries make it through the compression test no problem so something to think about is then put that battery on charge so that when you go to start the vehicle um, you, you're not stuck with a flat battery you know? and the best way is to charge the battery not use a jump starter and make the alternator recharge the battery. It's not what it's designed to do. Um, not the best thing for the alternator or the battery. But that's another topic. We'll get to that. Um, what else can I tell you about compression testing? Other engines, you've got to look up uh, their own specifications. The best highest I've seen on a 1KD is around about 420 PSI. So that's a really good one. Um, if I saw 450, I think I'm saying that's where a bit of oil leaked down number four. That's what I was saying at the start about once you pull number four injector out, that oil that's in around this area, this is the oil cooling area on an injector, and it can leak down and, you know, once it gets down onto the piston, it helps seal the rings, you know, that's kind of like your, that's how you test, you know, compression if you want to work out if it's the valves or the, the rings or whatever the case may be in an engine. But that's another video, guys, compression testing. Um, so, look, so many 1KDs we've seen, and most of them are all, I'll say 370 at the very low end, usually 380, 390, good ones 400, really good ones 410. Either side of the 400 is really good. Don't think if you've got a 370, it's crap or anything like that. Remember, the book says you can go as low as 290. So, still really good engines for whatever reason. They probably just maybe less oil changes, not as good oil. And this is where it's important that you use half decent oil at least and regular oil changes and you keep your intakes clean and keep that dust out use the grease on the seal make sure it's all sealed if you're on a trip where you get dust regular air filter changes 
okay? Because the engine's gonna suck the air it needs and it'll get dust with it if it needs to, okay? Understand that. What saves your engine? Your compression side of it is oil, lubrication, okay? Oil, 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 and clean air, okay? And that doesn't mean the exhaust gas recirculation, that's not helping things either, you know? Dirty, dry, abrasive exhaust gases, carbon from exhaust, you know, that black stuff that's in your in your engine. Like, is that any better than dust? Of course not, okay? So I'm not telling you what to do. <laughs> Seven millimeter, but you know what I mean, okay? So this is compression testing. If you're doing your own injectors, we used to compression test every engine, okay? We used to do every engine. Because of the variables you get, we stopped doing it because sometimes it was a bit of a time waster where you get a bit of soot and you go, what's going on? And you waste time on it. If you've got a car, the way to do these jobs is prevention. They're grouse engines. As I said, they're good fuel systems. The injectors are wear and tear. They need to be changed periodically. And the way to do it is you bring it in and you do it as prevention. Like you do oil changes. I've said in other videos, you don't wait till there's, oh, look at the oil. She's a bit black and thick. It's sticking on that dipstick. Time to change it. No. Change it when it looks good, okay? Change your injectors when they look good. Look, I don't care, but some, you know, a couple of people are thinking, hey, that's what I don't care about the inject. Don't change them. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I'm just giving you advice. What I'll do, not when they're new. You don't go, I'm going to put injectors every 10,000 Ks or every 50,000 Ks. As from new, and when I say seven years, 170, I'm generally talking the full DLC injectors, which are only in vehicles from about 2013 or injectors we've supplied to replace those pre-2013 injectors that were not DLC. The replacements from us, full DLC, okay? So those, you know, probably even longer, you know? But look, it's only 2020, they've been since 2013. We're just coming to that time where we can see how long they last. Well, I've put plenty of videos up, particularly maybe in the VIP group where I've shown you know, nozzle needles and stuff. And we don't keep them all, but we've got a few there. And we've, we've gone through all these sort of nozzle needles and showing you the wear that happens on the end of those, even with the full DLCs. And it's looking like they need replacement from about the 150 mark. So I'll be surprised if any full DLC injectors don't last 150. It's going to be contamination from people working on it, contamination from fuel. If that happens, it's going to be very rare. I'll be surprised if they don't last at least 150. And I won't be surprised if they're still looking good around 200,000 Ks. And I've seen them and I've changed them at over 200,000 Ks. And I'm suggesting by about 200 for full DLCs, you should probably be replacing them then. That's why I've got the guide, 7 years, 170. Now, it hasn't changed. Injectors change. Information changes with particular injectors and what the components are and what the wear rate is. I'll still say with the older 120s, you're still going to need to be, change those injectors about anything from 100, 120, 150,000 Ks. In a 120, you probably shouldn't be pushing the injectors past 150,000 Ks. That being said, there's plenty of people out there that are on original injectors at two or 300,000 Ks. There's luck though, remember that guys. Are you gonna cancel insurance because you haven't had a claim for the last 20 years? Are you that lucky? Well, that's kind of like what you gotta think about. Anyway, we're going off topic. It's not about replacing injectors, compression test. I'm not suggesting you need to do it every time, but if you're doing a few of these or other vehicles where these can be helpful, you should probably have a compression test and you don't need to spend $500 on a compression test. You can get these sorts of things for, you know, 50 to 100 bucks, give or take. Um, you don't have to have four, but you might want to have two. You can have all these in there so the oil doesn't leak while you're, and you could test two of them, right? You know, the other two are just going to go ch -ch 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 and blow the pressure out, whatever. Or they might hold the pressure at the valve, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, right? The point is you've got all four in, so you want four of those in my opinion, or eight on a V8, so that they cover the holes and so that so the oil doesn't leak and start fudging the results, if you know what I mean. Because if you're gonna do a test, it might as well be accurate. That's what I'm trying to say. If you're gonna do it, it might as well be accurate. If you start pulling everything off, it's just as much work or more to do it through the glow plug ports on a 1KD. And by the time you pull that out and grit falls down the glow plug hole because it's all dirty around there and you put this in, you're going to get a fudge result as well. You've probably got a better chance to get a cleaner result with these by pulling the injectors out really carefully so that none of the carbon falls off and then just clean that port with a dowel with a rag the way we've explained in other videos and whatever, whatever, whatever. Anyway, that's long enough, guys. Hopefully you found that really awesome with all the parts, where to get them and that information. So thumbs up on that one, please, if uh, that gave you some good info. If you haven't already subscribed, turn that bell on if you think I've um, you know, earned the subscription. You don't want to miss the next bit of information. And 
let us know in the comments um, if you've got one of these and how long you've had one for because these have been out for years I think probably I don't know I don't know years I really don't know let us know if you've got one or if you've got four whatever the case may be or if you're going to get one all right guys thanks for watching catch up